I love you, man. My kids love you. We all love you. Hello, is this God? Yes, it is. Thank you, God. Thank you for your services. Your wisdom is very much appreciated. Man, I think you are the pimp of men. <laughs> Thank you. But you pimp women, obviously. I listen to you all the time. I love what you're doing on the show. You're an icon down here, man. I love your show. We listen every day. And Dallas, Texas supports the 101, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really hated you at first. But when I gave you a chance, I learned that I don't have to be polite to women. I can be an a-hole and they will love me for it. I kind of figured, you know, you've been married about three to four times. 17, 18 times, yes. Oh, 17 times? Yes, 17 times I've been married. Mm -hmm. Oh, so then obviously you were kind of desperate to be in a relationship. Oh, I was, but not anymore. Oh, okay. Now I realize little sluts like you are easily gettable. Oh, okay. I get it. I have a cousin who's a dating this loser and I always tell her that she should drop him and she's like well I love I love him and I'm like just do what I do when, I, when girls tell me I lo that they love me I tell them I love you too girl but then again I love pizza but then I tell off and get the hell out I have things that other girls can't offer what's that I'm really smart and I'm really good looking really smart doesn't do anything for guys see when women talk about smart. being smart it means they're never gonna shut up I do got a woman she's large and she's been that way for quite a long time how big you know is she I you know, I ain't weighed her lately, but I, she, she's somewhere in between 280 and 300. 280 and 300. So um, you got to see it when we go to the beach, man. A lot of people look, you know, a lot of people The laugh. harpoons come out? Once you get old enough to have sexual feelings, you certainly don't have them towards your dad. I believe whatever happened when you were younger later transfers to the people, the men that you have relationships with. I have been with women who literally have treated me like I am their dad. And do you like that? I just like getting laid. Once he found out that she was pregnant and he absolutely was sure that it wasn't his kid, why didn't you grab that bitch by her hair and say, we're going right now to get a DNA test, whether you like it or not? I think love in general is just a root of uh, everyone being weak and insecure, everyone being dependent and thinking that they need someone and not confiding in themselves. Again, it just pretty much boils down to everyone is just pretty idiotic. Everybody's pretty idiotic. Words to live by there, Ryan. Do you expect a guy to pay on the first date every time? Is, is, is that the deal? Yes, that's the way it should be because I'll tell you why. Because why? Because what do I owe you? No, no, no. Let's you talk about this. What do I owe you on the first date, sweetheart? What do I owe you on the first date? Are you that much of a loser that you want a woman to pay for you on a first date? I'll tell you, I'll try it the other way. I did live as a loser for about five, ten years, doing the gentleman thing, being the good guy. You know who I always lost to? Some guy who was worse looking than me, who no, treated girls like crap. Do you want to know why? Because every time you treat a girl like trash, she loves you. When you ignore her, all she does is want to pay attention to you. You know who taught me that? Big Poppy, Tom Likas. There it is, sweetheart. Learn it. Learn it and live it. From Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. I love these students, man. What a classroom. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right back, right, right down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866-FLASH. Friday on the Tom Liger Show. Headlights on, men. Turn your headlights on wherever you may be, ladies. If you got a nice pair of knockers, show us what you got. Show us your cans, for God's sake. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not... 
kick your ass the hell off the air. All you do is call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's, hey. Uh, it's Mike. Um, listen, I cannot figure out how to be a jerk to women. I'm in an area where, where I'm surrounded by, really, I'm just like smoking hot girls, and I can't figure out how to talk to them, you know, without just getting that look, that ice-cold look. Have you treated them like crap? I don't know how, Tom. I'm, well, that's I'm, why you're getting the ice-cold look. Uh, yeah. What can I do, Tom? What can I do? That's I, why you get the ice-cold look. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty handsome guy, I would say, you know. I, I, got, I got actually good looks and everything. I just... You know, when I talk to them, I say hello. I, I think I'm a little too cordial or something, you know, and I just, I get shot down big time. Or maybe that's just part well, of the yeah, game. That's, but that's why you're getting shot down. Chicks have heard every line in the book. They get uh, uh, the showered with gifts and drinks and meals and trips. And every guy in the world is nice to them. Hey, how you doing, sweetheart? Boy, you are hot. Hey, ah, would you like a drink, darling? Ah. Yeah, that's me. That's me. Yeah. yeah well, how, how's that working for you? <laughs> Tom, it's been a long time. Because for me, chicks hear that stuff all the time. What they don't see is a guy with balls enough to say, I could, <laughs> who have an attitude that says, I can live with you or without you. I really don't care. How do I, I mean, how do I do that kind of an attitude? Is it just, well, actually, I have no idea, you know? Whatever your instincts tell you to do, do the opposite. Okay. That's it. Just do the opposite of do whatever. Do the opposite of whatever your instincts tell you to do. Okay. What are you being nice to this girl for? She hasn't done anything for you. And being nice to her will not get you what you want. Wait, wait, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. So stop being so cordial. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I guess I've, um, I, I'm trying to keep myself from, well, I haven't gotten laid in a little while, and I'm trying to keep myself from getting into trouble again. I'm a student of yours. Oh, uh, uh, you now have the stink of death on you when you go out there, and you have to turn that around by being a jerk. Yeah. All right, Tom. I, you know, I, um, I'm just being, just do the opposite, right? That's it. Right. Yeah. How do I approach them at this point then? I mean, you know, what do I do I approach them at all? I tried like I would try to approach. avoid approaching them. I would just be there drinking, hanging out. Uh one of the most effective approaches I ever use is going to a bar, ordering drinks for myself. I, I've done that. I've I I've, I've done that a lot. <laughs> Don't women ever talk to you? No. No. Uh you know, it's probably the places I'm going to. It's you know, a lot of uh Places where where people are hanging out with other groups of people, and you know, I, you know, I, I don't want to know. If, I, I don't know if I should drop any of those names of those places, but yeah, I won't. But uh, no, go yeah. ahead, tell us the names. We're not going to slander them or anything. Okay, it's like uh, like BJ's or Fridays. You know, uh, it's you know they're pretty. I mean, sociable places. You know, there's a lot of people there. Um, often, you know, Fridays uh, is a good place to pick up receptions. That's where they they buy their own drinks there. <laughs> You're laughing. It's true. Well, there's, yeah, there's a lot of waitresses and girls like that there. Waitresses? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, these are the women at the low end of the pay scale. Mm -hmm. And women are cheap to begin with. But when women want to buy their own drinks, they go to Fridays. Right. When they want you to buy their drinks, they go to the W. W Hotel. They get you to pay $14 for martini. Which we don't want us to do. We, no. We don't want me to do it. No, we don't. <laughs> um, Though, I, when you go to a place like that and buy yourself a $14 martini, the women get a little friendlier, hoping to get you to buy them a martini, mm -hmm. which All you right, won't. So, right. And that gives you an opportunity to lay your wrap on them, which is, why, you, why should I buy you a drink? Now, at this point, do these girls ask, like, hey, you know, how about you buy me a drink? When they're $14, yes, they do. <laughs> okay. When it's a four ninety five margarita, probably not. Right, right, right. Okay. All right, Tom. Well, you know, again, you know, I was just trying to, I, I've been trying to do this the right way without having to get tied down with some girl. 
yeah. I have just the worst history with girls, you know. I'm not the worst history, but I'll usually just get into a relationship and just stay with it for a while and then move on after another while, you know, which closes up all my options, you know, which I'm still, you know, now that I'm completely open, have been open for like two and a half years, I'm still just, you know, hit, like mostly miss, but hit and miss, you know. Oh, no. Well, that's my deal, Mike. <laughs> Unbelievable. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Mark, this is Tom. I mean, sorry. <laughs> hey, Tom, this is Mark. First time caller. I've been listening to you a year. I just told your guy that I was one of those guys to, uh, you know, hey, I'll do anything for you. What do you need? I'll do this. I'll do that. And uh, the girl I was with, she ended up leaving me for the guy who, you know, treated her like uh, like scum, you know, talked That's around how bit, it whatever. is. That's now, how it is. Girl, I'm sorry? That's how it is. That Yeah, obviously. So I started listening to you, and now the girl I'm with, I'm co completely like, you know, well, whatever. Like, you know, do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And now it's all over me. She can't stop. I mean, Tom, you're, you're – uh, people need to take your advice, bro. It's it's awesome, bro. I, I could not say anything else except good things. And uh, I love you, and uh, you're the father I never had, bro. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Can you take me out, Lacey Peterson style? Of course I can. Thank you, bro. Amber. Hey. Amber. Amber, Mr. Peterson. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I got three chicks in front of me in a Toyota Corolla flashing their bread. Tell me about those racks. They're nice. Two of them. One of them's, got, one of them's a little bit smaller, but they've got to be both double D. Let's see. They're right in front of they got to be listening to me because they're both looking at me now. And there they go, flashing them again. Oh, I love that. I love that. Tom, name another radio show that gives you bare breasts in the afternoon. Absolutely not. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Flash Friday, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. All right, uh, Mike, hello. Hey, Tom. This is Mike. How you doing? All right. I just said that, but fine. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, first of all, uh, I'm out of Hollywood, California, and your popularity is growing with the uh, Armenian crowd out here, so congratulations on Love that. Love that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and uh, my my story goes a little something like this. Um, 23 years old, uh, you know, I've I've been out of a relationship for two years now. Complete a-hole towards the girls and everything. I have no problem getting them. That's not an issue. Uh, the issue is before that, I was in a relationship for three years. Uh, we I broke up with her because of her mother being too nosy. Uh, she's since then been engaged and all that. But I guess to get over her, I see her once in a while. The feelings are there. I'm not going to act on it, nor do I plan to, or nothing like that. But how do I get rid of those feelings? <laughs> well, first of all, you don't belong in a relationship at such a young age. Yeah, you know, you're right. You don't. You're right. Do you hear these people who call in who are at the other end of the tunnel? You know what I'm talking about. Yep. The people who are 28, who've had boyfriends or girlfriends since they were 17 or 18. 19, mm -hmm. and now they get a kid and they make $27,000 a year, and they're recommending the guys like you don't get involved, have your fun. Have you ever heard a call like that on this show? Yeah, I've been listening to you for the past year now. Well, doesn't that tell you anything? No, it does, and uh, I actually got out of the relationship before I even started listening to but you. Yeah, but uh, you got to remember, getting going back in time will put you right in that place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's just my, my I agree with you totally, 100%. I'm in agreement. I'm against being in a relationship right now because the uh, sole reason for being in it is the sex. And if you're getting that, then why do it? But, um, and I agree with you being a hole towards them. It'll be easier, this and that. The only, my question is, I'm in agreement with everything, but how, what, 
procedure should I do? What should I? The do procedure is just keep getting laid, keep having a good time, keep going to school, keep studying, keep working, keep saving and investing your money, keep uh, doing things that make your life better. Uh, you know, I I do all of that, and once every two three months, I run into her. We live in the same city, you know, small close knit community. I run into her at a stoplight or something like that, and it, it all comes back. Well, and, uh, this is part of maturing. If you if you can't break up with somebody and move on with your life, you have not matured enough yet. No, I moved on with my life. Well, yeah, if yeah, you moved on with your life. When you see her in the next car and you wave at her and she goes her way and you go yours and you feel good, that's when you moved on with your life. All right. You have not well, moved right. on with your life. All right, Tom, thanks for the advice. Mike, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. By the way, it does not have to be these advice calls. It can be anything you want to talk about here. And I want to remind you guys: it can be anything that happened in the news. It can be anything that happened in the world. It can be any personal question for me. It can be anything. For some reason, you guys are neat. All these needy people calling in. One eight hundred. I don't mind needy people, but come on. I'm sure there's other things people want to talk about. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Robert on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, how's it going, Tom? Great, Robert. How's it going? Pretty good? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to, you know, hearing these people, the way they talk uh, about, uh, you know, their kids, their divorce, I, I they should just let the kid grow up. You know, I, I think it was like three callers. Uh, it was a girl with her 13-year-old kid. I think she should just let them, uh, you know, grow up instead of trying to convince them you know, do this, do that. I, I got kids. I got I got five kids. I've been divorced three times. So you win me by one. <laughs> five kids? Yes, I have five kids, three different ladies. But they never got me for child support. Um, um, you know, I'm going through the, this last divorce. I'm still trying to clear this up. Well, the last one, I have three kids. And uh, uh, um, I, I convinced him, look, if I pay child support, you, 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 it's not going to work out because, it, you know, it's not going to work out. I, I convinced her. She said, yeah. So we're going through a divorce right now. And um, all, all these, my other kids already, one wife, the first wife left me. They didn't know about, I still don't know where my, the. the what is the question kids. here? Go on. You have a question? Yes. What would that be? Okay. Um. Um. What 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 I'm what I'm trying to say is is when then people call. I, I guess I hear them and I don't understand. You like don't understand people, what? Okay. Like like when they call and they tell you about their kids. I don't think the kids have to do anything about. It. Hello. Well, I don't know what you mean. Okay, um, I'll put it like this. When girls get mad and they go, well, none of this would have happened if you would have used the rubber. Or it, 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 it. So this is what I tell them. The mother's a whore. The father's a bastard. Um, a, a, a baby to name. No, nine months of pain. A baby to name. None of this would have happened if the rubber wouldn't tore. <laughs> All right. You're a poet. And we didn't even know it. That's called a pause. A pause that refreshes. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Ivan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ivan. How's it going, man? How Great. Going, okay. Great, man. I just, you know, go say hi and talk a little bit about Ross Martin, how, you know, how, how much of a pussy he is and and how strained he is on that chick he's getting married to, you know. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Russ Martin, for people who don't know, precedes us in Dallas and uh, is the number one radio personality in Texas and one of the top radio personalities in the country. And uh, as people in uh, Dallas know, but uh, along the rest of our network don't know, uh, I've been uh, calling Russ and trying to uh, encourage him to not get engaged 
uh, up to it, including I was, uh, you know, I was uh, prepared to show my prenuptial agreement or whatever he needed to see so he would understand. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? But he's doing it anyway, huh? Man, you know what? I, I, I'm just so disappointed because, you know, for the last couple of years, I've been listening to Ross Martin before your show comes out. And when I heard this, man, a couple of weeks ago, I was just so upset, dude. I couldn't I couldn't even just listen to his ass anymore, you know? It was just ridiculous, dude. It's, it's, it's just awful, you know? And I think we should do something to prevent this horrible mistake of him getting married. And, what, you know, what do you think we can do? In his life. What, what do you think? You know what? If I can prevent Russ Martin from getting married, you just tell me what needs to be done, and I'm willing to do it. Well, uh, I say we go right to the station, man, and just make Drive down to the station. We, we all know? drive down to the station. Then what are we going to do? Hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. I, I, what, what are we, wait, wait, what are we going to do when we get to the station? It's right along the freeway there. I've been there many times. When you get to the station, what are we all going to do? Well, I was thinking, me, myself, personally, I want to make a sign that says pussy and just hold it way up high so you can okay. read it. Okay, so sign it, that know? says, I'll make a note, sign that says pussy, okay? And just tell me how, how much of a fool he is, you know? I'm, I'm 29 years old, never been married, no kids. As a matter of fact, tonight I'm going to go hit one of my ex-girlfriends that I dumped a few months ago. Uh, and I just want to thank you because I've been a true listener for the last 34 years, man. And ever since I listened to you, I got more pay than I ever have in there my you whole go. life. That's right. That's and, right. And, you know, I, I follow the Black is 101 rules to the bone, man. And I'm a true listener. And I just, you know, want to say thanks, man. And you're doing a great job. Keep it up. And... And if you let me say a shout out to my boy Josh, who's, whose birthday's tomorrow, uh, you know, happy birthday, bro. I love you, and I love you, Tom. Keep up the good work, and take me out with old school. All right, Ivan. Here you go. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Christy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. I have a question. I'm having a problem. My dad, after 20 years of being apart from my mom, has all of a sudden decided that he needs a girlfriend. He needs a steady girlfriend. That's fine, but I feel like he's settled. She's ugly. She's fat. I know he could do better. He has a really good job, makes really good money. How do I break it to him? Well, you got to tell him the truth. I mean, I've told him. I told him that I thought he could do a lot better, but, I mean, I don't know. You know, I guess it's just hard when after so long to turn it away. No, well, let me ask you this question, Christy. Is is the deal that he hasn't dated in a while, so he has no game? Is that it? No, my dad has game. Girls hit on him just, you know, when he goes to the supermarket, when he goes places, they're drawn to him. But So you think your dad's girlfriend can suck a basketball through a garden hose, or what is it? I don't know. That takes... I don't know. <laughs> He's got some <laughs> something special, but I just think he could do a lot better. <laughs> you think so? I think he could do a lot better. He listens to All you. Right. So I when you tell him this, him. when you tell him this, what does he say? Oh, you know, it's nothing serious. We're just friends, but it is serious. He stays the night at our house on, you know, for days on end. Ugh. So you can't say it's not serious. Something serious is going on. Well, he's certainly getting some serious uh, uh, action, but whether you'd want to get that action with somebody who's fat and homely. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. I he's he's real into his like physical he lost a lot of weight recently. He goes to the gym. He always said, you know, like I would never settle for a fat broad. I could get who I want, you know, I'm uh -huh. single, I'm in shape and so now he's settling and it's like, Come on, snap out of it. How old is your dad? He is about fifty two. Fifty two. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the thing is, obviously your dad doesn't feel like he has the kind of relationship with you where he can open up and talk about this. 
Well, we've always been really open, you know, we share, you know, we talk about stuff that father and daughters don't really talk about, you know, like I'll show them, I'll point out a nice rack to them or, uh-huh. you know, he goes to the porn convention with my husband once in a while. Really? <laughs> they walk around, have a good time and... Maybe uh, maybe your husband is the one who needs to talk to him. Yeah, maybe it would help help coming from another guy. I right. Well, especially if they've done that kind of male bonding. If they've been to the porn convention, I'll bet uh, your husband could have an honest conversation with them about this. Does your husband agree with you? Oh, yeah. My husband, my sister's boyfriend, they all agree. You know, my dad could do a lot better. It's unanimous. He makes good money. He's not bad looking, you know. He shouldn't have to settle. And so. your dad is not. Uh, he's not got others in the bullpen. He's got just this one. He's just got this one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way to do this is to have, as I always say, to have a good rotation of the bullpen, you know? You got to have your uh, starter, your stopper, your middle relievers. You got to have your you uh, setup. You got to get a lineup going first, then. Well, yeah, you got to have, <laughs> anytime you get a chick, you got to have somebody warming up in the bullpen. Yeah. So, you know, if she throws her arm out or, uh, <laughs> you know, if she's uh, walking too much, you, you got to bring somebody else in. Yeah. Well, I'll try having my husband talk to him. Maybe it'll help coming from another guy. Uh, the best thing is to have a good closer <laughs> with a 98-mile-an-hour well, fastball. I think he's got himself a superstar in bed. She's just not easy on the eyes. I had one chick coming to my house. She wore a shirt that said, Game Over. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It just blows my mind, man, the, the amount of people that call in on your show and the amount of ignorance displayed. Hey, don't make fun of that. We bank on that. Yeah, I know. I love it. It's entertaining. So I pay the bills, baby. The Tom Likas Show. Ah, yes. From my beloved home of Hollywood, California. I can see this place from... My Terrace, the Tom Likas Show, coming to you from the lot at Paramount Pictures. I can literally stand out on a beautiful day like today and see the big white water tower that stands over Paramount. And uh, it's kind of cool knowing I don't have some big commute or anything. I just see it from my house. I can kind of tool on over here. You know, if it was really a really bad day, I could walk here. I know Gary can walk here. But uh, 4.3 miles, I could walk here if I had to. No big deal. 1-800-5800-TOM. Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. Let's say hello here to Phil. Phil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Phil. Um, I, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, I married a girl. I just married her like a couple months ago. She's uh, from Mexico. She's a Latina. And uh, I want to know if the uh, rules change. Which ones? Your rules. Your 101 like is rules. Well, I mean, once, you know, first of all, the 101 rules are for when you're unmarried. When you're married, they're pretty much irrelevant. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're not dating, are you? You're married. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm married, but I don't know. I mean... There must be some changes, you know. She's not completely Americanized yet. That's good. <laughs> Tell us what it's like. Tell us what it's like. Uh, you know, she caters, you know. I mean, even to my friends, family, everybody, you know. I mean, good food, good everything, man. Good food, <laughs> laundry folded. Yeah. Everything. Sex, whatever you want it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. <laughs> then when she's done, she could say, I've had my Phil. Right, Phil? Yeah, Felipe. <laughs> I go by Phil. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it later. Anyway, yes. All right, so uh, that doesn't sound like there's a problem there. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I decided to follow your rules, you know, but... I just fell in love with her. You know, she's a Latina. I don't like American girls. Well, I don't either. Look, you're over 25. I don't recommend marriage, but you are over 25. And I, mean, I, I knew about her, you know. I knew all about you, your, your show and everything, your recommendations or rules, whatever. But, you know, I'm I'm really happy, you know, and uh, 
And I don't know if she's ever going to turn, you know, completely American. <laughs> that would be spectacular if she doesn't. <laughs> How's her English, yeah. Phil? Uh, you know, she's uh, not not as good as mine, but she's getting there. Okay. And does she have a lot of American friends? Not yet. And that might be a problem later on, you know. That's right. <laughs> I'm a... Uh, I'm just wondering if I can get a job over there and just just go live back there, you know. And just, <laughs> there'll be no problem. Live there, in Mexico you know? so she never gets Americanized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got two hands. Do it yourself. I'm I'm hoping she she doesn't. And you know I I try to speak uh, you know Spanish to her, you know, and because yeah. she wants to learn English, but I say no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to do with that. Yeah. Pretty soon she'll be taking your clothes out to the dry cleaner to be folded. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do it at home. Oh, yeah, man. You, you want to do it everything at home. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, man. I mean, I went by your rules and everything, went to Mexico, married a Latina, and I'm very happy, man. <laughs> So you're glad you didn't marry one of those American bitches, right? Oh, my God, man. Yeah, I mean, I used to be a pussy, you know? P-U-S-S -S -S capital Y. I mean, why, why? I mean, oh, my God, man. Why, 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 why? <laughs> exactly. Well, Phil, yeah. I think that's spectacular. If you're going to get married, that's the way to go. Stay away from the American women. Stay away. Jamie, on the Tom Likas show, hello. I'm um, good to talk to you. I know. Hey, man, I haven't talked to you since I saw you at El Coyote. Oh, boy. <laughs> One of my favorite little haunts. Oh, yes. That I can remember of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I think a spotlight needs to be shed on something. I think you're just the guy since you've got an open forum and can talk about it, see what other people's opinions are. Mm -hmm. We have a guy... A uh, city prosecutor attorney named Rocky Delgadillo. Yes. And he has married a lovely bride who he's had children, or at least a child with, from Montana. She's been out here for whatever number of years, or probably over a decade or whatnot. Now, this is a guy who's chasing guys because they, you know, jaywalked or whatever. And uh, you've seen the stories, right? Of course. Un. Believable. Now, for people who haven't heard the story, let me explain it. Because there's people listening in Dallas and other places who don't know about this. Uh, in case you don't know who Rocky Delgadillo is, if you've been following the god-awful Paris Hilton story at all, uh, Rocky Delgadillo is the city attorney of Los Angeles, and he's the guy who started ranting and raving when Paris Hilton got out of jail after three days. And he's the one who said that uh, she should be hauled back into court, put back in jail, uh, how dare she be driving around on a suspended license? This is terrible. And they actually did what he wanted. They uh, had a hearing, brought uh, Paris Hilton back up before the judge who sentenced her. And the judge said, all right, you're going back to jail. It was Rocky Delgadillo who was behind this move to get her back into court. And then we find out that uh, Rocky Delgadillo had some skeletons in his own closet not the least of which is uh, we find out that later he admitted uh, after being pressured and pressured by the media here, something the media rarely do here locally in Southern California, uh, that he was pressured to finally admit that he had lent his city vehicle, an SUV, to his wife. And his wife was out there driving without a, you know, she had a suspended license just like Paris Hilton. And not only that, we later found out that they had no car insurance. Oh. Then we found out that Rocky Delgadillo uh, just sent the car in for repair and let the city pay almost $2,000 for the repairs to the vehicle that his wife had uh, had caused when she wasn't supposed to be driving the car because city vehicles are not supposed to be lent to other family members. We then found out that Mrs. Delgadillo had a bench warrant out for her arrest outstanding for nine years. From Santa Monica. Rocky Delgadillo is going to regret the day he said anything about Paris Hilton. I, I mean, of it's all the people. Yes, yes. 
unbelievable. Yes, he refused to answer questions. This guy, put it this way, if, if anybody voted or read a newspaper in Los Angeles, he'd be dead in the next election. Dead. You know, he's a sworn ward of the court. You know, that takes with it a lot of responsibility. You know, with that, forget about ethics and morality and doing what's right, what's obviously right. But, I mean, this guy, look, if you and I took our car through our car insurance at our work or something and had it repaired, you know what they call it? It's fraud because you're lying to get money. It's theft. They'll not only fire you, they will probably sue you for that, and they can follow you criminally, you know. So this is the kind of thing the average guy gets. This guy says, oh, hey, look, my mistake, you know, and I'm sorry it was a regretful incident, so I did so. I'm going to reimburse the city. All's forgiven. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, now that you got your hand caught in the cookie jar, but one, you lent a city vehicle who you're supposed to be driving for city business. It's not a pleasure cruiser. To his wife, who had a suspended license, which he claims he didn't know anything about, she slams it on a suspended license. He also claimed, by the way, that he didn't know his wife had an outstanding bench warrant for nine years. By the way, this is the city attorney. This guy's the This is the guy dirt. who's supposed to be the enforcing case. the laws of the city of Los Angeles. This woman's been driving around for nine years with a bench warrant, and amazingly, the LAPD and the city attorney had no idea that someone had had a nine-year warrant outstanding. Nine years! Now, this is a bench warrant. Last I heard... You know, when you're talking in before a judge, this is a judge who said, look, I want to talk to that individual. That's a bench warrant. You know, usually what I remember, they send a sheriff out, they grab you by the collar and they bring you before the judge, and then he can spank you. It's not something that just floats around in the ether until, oh, they bump right. into you. As far yeah, as that's I right. Know. You know, so this is, uh, you know, you, call them, you can call them flaunt laws, whatever you want to call them. But, I mean, when it comes to his and his own, it the behavior... And the example it sets, yeah, meanwhile, he's putting Paris Hilton away. Average guy goes away. You get one for four if you don't, you know, kill somebody. When is Mrs. Delgadillo going to jail? That's what I want to know. When is she going in? Yeah, yeah. And she hasn't even appeared on that thing yet. This is a bench warrant still outstanding out in Santa Monica. Well, Rocky Delgadillo now is being investigated by the California State Bar. He's being investigated by the ethics panel here in the city of Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that this thing all just doesn't disappear and go away. I, I hope he gets the book thrown at him, too, just like Me I wanted too. Paris Hill to get the book thrown get at her. Down the toilet. They deserve it. Because they're working, I mean, it's unbelievable in the sense that the fact is, why can she get her license reinstated when she's got a bench warrant? How do you get insurance when you don't have, you know, you've got, oh, another thing as far as an accident goes, let me stop just for a second. I'm not sure how the accident occurred. 1400 bucks worth of damage. There are some reporting criteria. Somebody gets hurt in California, you have to report it. It's mandatory you lose your license. If it's over a certain dollar amount, I don't know whether it's a thousand or whatever the number is, but that's a pretty significant amount, fourteen hundred bucks. So unless this happened in their parking lot at home, you know, their driveway or something, if it involved in another car, if it exceeded the limit, there's a reporting responsibility there to the DMV. So I mean, there's just so many ways to dissect this thing where they're not following the letter nor the intent of the law. But that's because nobody here pays any attention to what's going on at City Hall. And uh, so everybody down there, the city council, by the way, uh, they haven't had much to say about this either. Well, okay. you notice, the reason everybody They've all got city up, cars, but... too, and you know their families are all driving those city vehicles. Well, you remember when, um, um, for the Supreme Court justice, that one black gentleman that went up before all, like, Kennedy and all those folks, I, and then the guy said, look, this is nothing more than a modern-day lynching. And everybody shut up and sat down. Talking about Clarence Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Now, Clarence Thomas is about as qualified as I am to be on the... I don't care what color he is. I really... I could care less. But I'm saying, as far as credentials, he's got as, about as much right as I do to sit on that, uh, you know, the Supreme Court. It's a joke. But when he's talking to the Kennedys and all these guys, and then they're all very combative and they're drilling him for question after question, and then finally... Uh, yeah, I know we're out of time, Jamie, but I know where you're coming from, and I thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.